Okay, so I feel like I've done a ton of videos about vitamin D deficiency, telogen effluvium. If you don't know, I did struggle with a vitamin D deficiency and also uh, stress-related hair loss. I started noticing that my hair was falling out and I went to go see my doctor and she did some blood work and she did realize that I was low in vitamin D. Now, a lot of people ask me like, what were your levels? I actually don't know. So once the blood work came in, she sent me an email saying, yes, you're vitamin D deficient. This is how much vitamin D you should be taking per day. But she never actually told me my levels. So next time I go see her, I will ask so I can update you guys after that I had like this really crazy year that um, basically made me get stress induced hair loss and it was really discouraging and it was really upsetting but it was something that I worked through and I got through and I'm still getting through because I'm not a hundred percent there yet uh, my hair is in better shape, but it's not as full and as thick as it used to be. This video, um, I'm gonna talk about the things that I've kind of been doing, mostly a hair mask that a lot of people have been asking about. And when I say a lot of people have been asking about it, I do get DMs almost every day from people saying that they watched my video and that they're experiencing the same thing and that they uh, wanna know how long it took for everything to go back to normal and the things that I've been doing. So we always talk about how like diet is a huge part of it, eating the right foods, um, like the whole you are what you eat concept, and then also taking your vitamins, also uh, seeing your doctor to find out exactly how low you are and how much of, like if you do need vitamin D, how much you should be taking, what supplements are right for you. I'm not a medical professional, so I really cannot speak to what you should be taking in terms of supplements. All I can say is that my doctor led me in the right direction. The things that I've been doing as at home to help with the hair growth. Uh, first and foremost, you're gonna wanna get a shampoo that does not have silicones in it. So the thing about silicones is they do clog the hair follicle, and then when your hair follicle is clogged, the hair can't come through, right? So most drugstore shampoos are just packed with silicones. So that might be your first step. I know it's a little more expensive to get the high-end stuff, but at the end of the day, if you're really struggling with this, it might be worth the purchase. I did use Diva Curl products for a while, and I loved Diva Diva Curl until people started saying that Diva Curl was um, making their hair fall out. And I was like, well, <laughs> great. But uh, then I transitioned to Verb, which I picked up from Sephora during the Sephora sale. It's good. I mean, it's not anything to write home about. Like it's, it's a good shampoo. My hair is not any better or worse using it. It's just about the same. I did order shampoo and conditioner from Function of Beauty because I keep seeing it all over the internet and everybody's like raving about it. So I'm like, you know what? I will give it a try. So I ordered shampoo and conditioner, which should be coming like next week or something. So uh, if I do like it, I'll update you guys on that, probably on my Instagram. So follow me on Instagram, shameless plug. Follow me on Instagram to learn more about that whole journey. Another thing is satin pillowcase. Satin pillowcases have made all the difference. So basically, when you are sleeping on a cotton pillowcase, you're more likely to get more static. You're more likely for your hair to snag into the material and fall out. When you have a satin pillowcase, your hair, not only the style stays much longer because like, it's just easier on your hair, but also your hair is not falling out as much. And also I haven't done much research on this, so I can't speak to it, but they do say that satin pillowcases are good for skin too. I don't know. I'll, I'll do some research and maybe do a video about that. I don't know. A whole satin pillowcase video. The meat and potatoes of this video is the hair mask that I've been doing because every time I talk to somebody on Instagram or whatever it may be, I tell them about this hair mask and I honestly swear by it. They're ingredients that you can mostly find in your kitchen um, and it's just super easy to do and you can leave it in for as little or as long as you want. Super low maintenance. I usually... On Saturdays, I make a note to like clean my whole house, do the laundry, like do all the chores on Saturday. So I'll put it in my hair Saturday morning and then by the time I'm ready to hop in the shower after I've cleaned the house and everything, like it's been sitting in my hair for two, three, sometimes maybe four or five hours depending on how much I did that day. And I do have to say that like I've noticed visible results. If you are somebody that has been on this journey with me in my first vitamin D video, 
to my second one, to my Telogen effluvium video. I honestly don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So if I'm not, we'll just move past it. But, um, and then now to this video, if you have been with me on this journey, then you know that like, I had a lot of hair loss in the front and then it kind of like went down to the back. The back isn't fully filled in yet, um, but it's much better. The front is way better. I still notice like if I put my hair in a ponytail or whatever, there are some gaps, but it's not as bad as it used to be. And I honestly credit not only a healthy diet and supplements, but also this hair mask. So anyways, I'm gonna stop teasing this hair mask and uh, actually get into it. So the things that I put in this hair mask, first and foremost, I put olive oil in it, about a tablespoon of olive oil. I used to use coconut oil, but then I realized that the molecules in coconut oil are very, very large. And I feel like, and this is not proven or anything, this is my own like, thought process on this. If the molecules in coconut oil are so large that when you put it on your skin, they can't absorb into your skin and cause breakouts, then it's probably going to do the same thing for my scalp and again, clog those hair follicles, which I don't want. So I transitioned to olive oil. And the thing about olive oil is it's rich in vitamin E and vitamin E really helps with that hair growth. Not only that, but it makes your hair super, super shiny and strong. So when you're growing your hair out, you want ingredients that are going to strengthen the actual strand because if you're getting breakage and all that you're still gonna have those spots you're not gonna have like a nice covering of new growth so you're gonna want strong healthy hair and olive oil is gonna do that for you so I use about a tablespoon of olive oil give or take I mean depending on the amount of hair that you have my hair is pretty long a tablespoon works for me if you have short hair you could do half a tablespoon whatever works for you next I use castor oil so I picked up this castor oil from Amazon and I do want to point out nothing in this video is sponsored at all I purchased all this on my own uh, I did pick this up from the uh, brand Ecla and uh, they are a natural organic brand that I discovered from Amazon. So I do, they have like a little eyedropper that you can um, kind of dispose the product out with. So I do about four-ish full eyedropper things full of castor oil. The two main ingredients found in castor oil that are known to help uh, promote hair growth are omega-6 fatty acids. And the other one, ugh, I wrote it down, ricinoleic, ricinoleic acid, ricin, I think, I don't know. Again, just assuming the pronunciation. If it's wrong, let me know in the comments. But anyways, those two ingredients that are found in castor oil are what are known to help with the growth of your hair. I can go on and on about castor oil. I've even been putting a little bit in my eyebrows just with a spoolie just to grow them out a bit more. That way when I do go get my brows threaded, finally, um, they'll have like a nicer, fuller shape. But castor oil is amazing for hair growth and I really like the brand Ecla so I will link them down below in the description box if you want to check them out on Amazon. Another ingredient that I put in this hair mask that has absolutely nothing to do with hair growth and everything to do with the look of your hair is honey. I like to use raw honey and I do about a tablespoon-ish of honey. Also, this is gonna make the entire mask a little more dense because all those oils, they can just like kind of start running down. This is gonna thicken it up and make it a little more dense. So I do about a tablespoon of honey. Again, you can eyeball it depending on the length of your hair. If you don't, if you feel like you don't need a full tablespoon, don't do a full tablespoon. But the thing about the honey is it helps reduce frizz, it helps promote shine, honey is an amazing ingredient to have in any hair mask and skin mask. Honey has anti-inflammatory anti effects. That was a mouthful. Um, so it does help with skin irritation. It helps with kind of like any kind of inflammation on the scalp or anything. Honey is just something that I like to put in any kind of homemade mask that I am making. And then last but not least, peppermint oil. So people, essential oil people, just know I'm putting this in a mixture with a carrier oil. So the peppermint oil is not going directly onto my skin. That is important because if you were to put essential oils directly on your skin, you can have a bad reaction. So be very, very careful with that. Um, always mix your essential oils with a carrier 
carrier oil if you're putting them on topically. But peppermint oil not only smells amazing, I literally use peppermint oil for everything. Headache, peppermint oil. Stomach ache, peppermint oil. Everything, peppermint oil. I swear by it. I have like a little vial of peppermint oil in every single room of my house. Not only does peppermint oil just smell amazing, but it also helps improve blood circulation. So I don't exactly know the science behind it, but if you've ever had peppermint oil topically on you, like if you've gotten those uh, rollers from Sage or whatever, then you know that it kind of has like a cooling tingling effect, which I love. So um, once you put it on your scalp, you get that kind of like cooling tingling effect. And I'm assuming that that's what's helping promote the circulation in your scalp, which in turn helps with hair growth. So I put this little mixture together and then I pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. You don't want to put it in any longer than that because it does get really hot and then it's hard to kind of like work with because it just is too hot on your hands. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and put it directly on my hair. I focus right on the scalp. I focus on my trouble areas and then I'll go in and I'll do the rest of my hair. So this does actually get very, very stiff when you put it in your hair because the castor oil is dense and then the honey is very dense. So when you put it all in your hair, it's just like stiff and like hard to work with. So um, you're not really able to massage your scalp as much as you would like to. So once I put it in, I actually go in with a hairbrush because I find that it's better to like evenly distribute the mask, but also it helps kind of uh, distribute all over my scalp too. So I'll go in with a hairbrush, I'll brush it all out, I'll put it in a bun on top of my head, and then I'll just leave it there for as little or as long as I want. I think uh, the last time I did it, which was yesterday, was like three and a half, four hours. And then my hair, like it just feels so much better. So anyways, that's pretty much it for me today. I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. If you guys try out the hair mask, I would love to hear about the process. Let me know on Instagram or leave it down below in the comments. Also, if you have any hair mask recipes or any ingredients that you think I should be adding to my masks, let me know, sound off in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload every single week. So anyways, thank you guys again so much for watching. Love you guys. And until next week, I'll see you later.